All right, everybody, it is 8.43 p.m. Eastern Time, September 21st, 2017. All right, we have a couple updates with Hurricane Maria. Uh, we were uh, a couple hours ago at 115 mile per hour winds as a Category 3, uh, about 964 as our pressure. Uh, the pressure did drop in the update, so I was expecting the winds to rise, which they did. We are now at 125 mile per hour sustained winds. And the reason for this, guys, is because it had its interaction with uh, Puerto Rico, which was horrible, and it weakened almost uh, actually down to a Category 2 at one point, uh, 110 mile an hour winds. And that was looking good for a bit, but we had our eye wall really form back again quickly. And there was a point where a strip of uh, dry air was getting pulled into the hurricane, which could have weakened it more, but it seems that that really didn't do much to it. It's uh, got its shape back. It's still a very healthy hurricane. And as projected, guys, it is getting stronger. We just need to see how strong it's going to get before it makes that northern turn uh, possibly towards the east coast, guys. That is not out of the picture yet, and I'm going to try to explain to you why in this video with some of the more detailed um, maps that I can show you with the jet stream. And it's really important to know this stuff because this is what steers these storms. I know I say this a lot, but that's how important it is. Um, and it is currently moving northwest at 9 miles per hour. So I'm going to show you some charts here. This one here is a uh, NASA.gov image. It shows you the, uh, it's called a disk view. It shows the entire, or at least one half of the globe. You can switch it to see the back side, but obviously we are focusing on this side. You get a good shot of Maria here. We still got Jose up in this area. And what I want to try to show you guys is um, why they're forecasting that they think uh, Maria will stay off the coast and also reasons why that may not happen. We have to understand that even with uh, predictions in the jet stream, anything past four or five days is just as much of a coin toss that is to uh, predict the hurricanes four or five days. So we need to remember that um, just because those that cone shows it coming up north and then staying out to sea, that doesn't mean that that's 100% fact. We need to remember about Irma. Um, about 30 hours, guys, we're talking less than two days, 30 hours before they projected Irma to make that north swing up the east coast that every model had shown it was going to do. The uh, Weather Channel was very confident this was going to happen. But what happened um, at that 30-hour mark was um, a break in the jet stream. If you can see up where my mouse is, you can kind of see the U here. I have some closer views I'm going to show you right after this. But just to give you an idea, they were expecting a deep U in this area for Irma. And once it passed over the top of Irma, which was about here at the time, they expected that high pressure to release to the east into the ocean. And then Irma was going to ride up the east coast. And all those models were certain of that. But what happened where what happened was is that we had that U here and there was a break in the lower part of the jet stream which formed a J on the left side and then a straight wall on the right side. So the right side of the U became its own separate entity and then the J, um, like what the jet stream does when it breaks is the, the bigger of the pieces reforms. So that J piece actually left the south, uh, the south states here and reformed up top, but it left that high pressure wall right here. And that's why we had that rain in the northeast during Irma when Irma was approaching Florida. And what that wall did, because it was left by the jet stream, is it pinned Irma down closer to this area. And it missed its turn to go up the east coast, and that's why it rolled across Cuba and then eventually went up the west side of Florida. So again guys, as soon as a day or two before um, we're expecting something to happen, things can change. So again, the jet stream prediction is just um, can be just as faulty as a hurricane prediction as far as the direction. And again, I'm going to get into this with some closer views. And here is one of those views. We have Maria down here passing over the north coast of the Dominican Republic. We have Jose up here still spinning around. We have a system over by the Great Lakes. And now we have a better view of this jet stream loop I'm talking about. Now this is pretty common, guys. We usually have the deep U's that come down into the lower states, and then we have those high rises, which would be this side of the jet stream. This is why we have this warm weather um, in the northeast right now. Very hot, 
like sunburn type weather. I saw some people in the comments saying they got sunburned in really low amount of time. You know, the sun is strong and we're dealing with a heat wave in mid-September. So, or mid to late September actually. So those are the types of things that happen. But anyway, as far as the jet stream goes, you can see this shape here. It's a basic U shape, but it's not like it's just a U and it moves from left to right from the west coast to the east coast in that same exact form. You can already see here that this bottom part of the U is almost swinging left to right. We have that one high wall here and we have our second high wall here and then the bottom of the U that goes a little bit off frame here. And you can see it's kind of swinging this way. That'll do that. It'll swing uh, towards the east. It'll get caught up and these walls will move uh, forward as the U gets stuck down. So lots of different morphing and changing with the jet stream as well as the predictions for these hurricanes, which is why I put so much uh, time into trying to explain the jet stream to you guys because at this time in the hurricane's life there's only two things really controlling its uh, direction and that is our constant high pressure in the Bermuda which I'm circling now which is more towards the east coast now and that's also the reason why um, the formation of Lee hung out way back in this area and then eventually is moving up into the right side of the Atlantic because that high pressure, the high Bermuda pressure is more towards this side. And that's why Maria is still down here, still moving west, uh, northwest now. It is making that little bit of a movement north, but again, it's this high pressure here that's keeping it pinned down, which was the same deal with Irma. Irma stayed along this path because of a mix of this high pressure here and also the jet stream doing its thing that eventually kept it on the west side. So again, we have our U here and what they're expecting to do, and this is what the models are basing their paths off of, is that they want this U to stay in form and eventually move all the way across the U.S., and then by the time Maria down here makes it up into this area, they're expecting this wall here to not only be here, but also the bottom part of the U to be low enough to catch Maria and keep it out to sea. Now that's a lot of things that need to go right in order for this to happen. And this is also why we always see these models changing every five hours, eight hours, even sometimes every hour. It's because the surrounding pressures and things going on are changing also. Nothing is really consistent when it comes to weather. Things change. You can get your basic ideas based off history and data, and then you make educated guesses off that. So this is what we're dealing with. We want this U, this is what we want to happen is the current forecast. We want this U to base, it's doing its little swing and then it might level out and then it's going to start moving across the U.S. Now this U can change. You can already see a little bit of fading going on in this bottom part. And that's similar to what happened with Irma. It separated here, leaving this wall a pressure uh, to be stuck on the East Coast. And then the rest of it caught back up to the jet stream and moved out. So this is what we don't want to happen because if we have either a break here or if this bottom part of the U stays really high, that's going to leave this whole area of the East Coast vulnerable to Maria hitting the coast. And that's why I'm uh, focusing on this. And if you notice some of the models, guys, uh, this is the current one right here. These were all swung out right over the top of Bermuda at one point and now if you notice some of them are starting to inch back to the east coast and that's because the jet stream is not moving as fast as it was predicted to move again these models a lot of them are based off of historical data from the past so yes they're expecting the jet stream to stay in true form and then be in true form when it gets to this side of the country but we already see changes in that and that's what I'm trying to show you in these images so we want this U to make it all the way across and then be that wall that presses Maria against the Bermuda pressure and keeps it along this path. And that's also why Jose is playing an important role still. Jose is basically cutting a path in these two highs. We do have high pressure right now in this area of the U.S. and we have the high pressure here. But because of Jose, there's a path cut out between the two high pressures. Now if Jose were not here, it would be... If you follow my mouse, it would be high pressure here, and it would loop up high pressure, high pressure, high pressure, high pressure, all in one big piece, and that would allow Maria to hit the coast. Now, but because Jose's here, we have that possible path. So that's why they're talking about, and that's why I've been talking about how Jose being here is actually a good thing. We need to wait and see if it stays long. Um, even if it does stay here, guys, there's still that chance that the jet stream might break. So again, we have all these different situations that may occur. 
All right, and finally, guys, I'm going to wrap this up with a little bit of drawing just to try to uh, pull all the stuff we were just talking about together in a little more of a simple term here. So, again, we have Maria here. We have Jose here. We have the high-pressure bubble in the Atlantic that doesn't look like it's going to change much unless something drastic happens. High pressure. Again, that's why Lee was stuck out here. It never made it underneath this bubble, so then it got forced up this way and then died out. So that's just to give you an example of how important this high pressure is to, to certain situations. Now again, if Jose was not here, this high pressure would extend up like this and then join the high pressure we currently have on the East Coast, which is causing most of our warm weather. And that is going to force Maria up in this area, and then it's going to have nowhere to go except for into the coast. The only thing we're hoping for, like I've been trying to describe, I'm going to back this up and get that stuff out of the way. Um, the U is currently right here, like we showed in the other chart. They're expecting it to move uh, west to east, like it always does, but without any interruption. So they want this U to be here by the time Maria gets to about this area. And what they're expecting to do is this pressure here is going to be strong enough to fight this pressure off, and then also with Jose, that leaves this path wide open for Maria to stay off the coast and then out into the ocean. So a few different things can happen here, guys. If we lose Jose, let's say Jose is not here. Again, that high pressure is going to continue into this area like that, and it's going to force Maria there. But if Jose does stay there, then we're relying on the jet stream again. Now, if there's no breaks in the jet stream, this is what should happen. It should be able to push Maria off the coast. But if we have a break in the jet stream, which we're almost seeing, if you want to look, I'll show you again really quick. You can almost see the break here. It's a, a U coming down here, and then it starts to fade there. So this may actually switch up pretty quickly. We might have some different forecasts as early as tomorrow, especially if this is going to be a separate front. You can see it already pulling up north towards Canada. And if we have that break there, then all these models are going to change because they're all being based on this U of the jet stream, staying true, moving to the east coast, and then eventually forcing Maria out. So any little change, guys, and this thing could be coming right to the east coast. And that's why why I'm trying to explain to some people down in the comments that are saying that we're in the clear that we're really not. I'm not trying to scare anybody. I'm not trying to put fear into anyone. I'm explaining the facts about the jet stream that constantly changes. So we don't always have uh, these models that the, the models that predict the jet stream are just as good as predicting the paths of hurricanes. After three or four days, we just don't know because of these possible breaks. And once again, to remind you, they were expecting this U also with Irma. Okay, and what happened once again is we had the break there that made this a separate front. This J piece actually went up and reformed up by Canada to the jet stream, leaving this wall all by itself on the east coast just like that. And as Irma was traveling this way, it was expected to come up here, but because of this front staying really low and moving this way, it pinned Irma down, it rolled across the coast, and then came up the west once that pressure released out into the ocean. All right? I know this looks like crap right here, but I hope you guys were able to follow that. We do really have to focus on the jet stream, and the, uh, the jet stream is also why the models are uh, beginning to shift back to the east coast, because not only is it going slower than expected out in this area, it's also showing a little bit of fading here. And again, that's going to cause this to be a separate piece than this J-looking shape, and this J-looking shape is automatically going to want to reconnect up by Canada, leaving this area, this high-pressure wall, to be on its own. And if that's not low enough, we're going to have a wide-open gap for Maria to move up and into the East Coast. So, guys, I will bring you an update in the morning. We're going to talk about this more, and we're going to see if there's any changes in the jet stream. That's what we're relying on. Thank you guys so much, and I'll talk to you in the morning.